response to President Makaro's address. Um, it's always wonderful to see Native people, no matter where we are. Um, and it's especially really good to see you here in D.C. Um, I have said this a number of times, but I really feel that Washington, D.C. needs Native people now more than ever. So thank you for being here. Um, you know, this is, I think, the third time that I'm spending time with you in three days, um, once virtually, of course, and then yesterday at that beautiful um, lunch to honor women, and um, I really appreciate all the work that goes into that. There are so many people behind the scenes who are do putting so much effort into these things um, and, and don't get the recognition, but you all know that. I mean, you are all from Indian country, and we all know that there is just, a, there are, it's like an army of silent people out there doing the work, and so I just wanted to give a nod to all the people in the background making things run smoothly and, and keeping the trains running on time. Um, you know, no matter how many times we meet, I mean, I could be here the entire time and not run out of things to talk about. We have so many pressing needs across Indian country, um, needs that are not partisan, needs that, um, you know, and, and I think so many of us don't see ourselves through the lens of a party. That is not part of our identity. So I think that's another reason that Washington, D.C. can really benefit from us right now. Um, one of the things that um, I'm excited to work on, um, it's Valentine's Day, it's also Ash Wednesday, so I don't know how those things uh, work together, but um, on February 16th, Alaska recognizes Elizabeth Karadovich, and she was an early civil rights leader in Southeast Alaska, really advocating for human dignity and civil rights for Native people. And um, my team is working on a House resolution that would honor Elizabeth Karadovich um, nationally. Thank you, Alaskans. Thank you. Um, we urgently need more Elizabeth Karadoviches, leaders willing to get involved, educate, and inspire. Um, so many of you are those leaders. Um, I want to also encourage folks, like I did in the, in the talk, um, virtually, to run for county offices, run for state offices, run for national seats. Um, we just, you know, one of the things I shared yesterday is, while we come to D.C. and we're talking at like a 400 level, you know, advanced, level, a lot of the things that we have to share in Washington, D.C. are really at the 100 level. About 60% of the people in the House have been there six years or less, so like myself. We're a really new group of people. I think that there has been more turnover in recent years than we've ever seen, um, for a lot of good reasons. And as Native people, we've always had to continually share our story and educate people. But I think now it's even to a greater degree. Um, just very, very basic things like how many tribes there are in our nation. How, um, basic um, things that we're lacking. I think that a lot of people don't understand how underfunded, chronically underfunded, Indian agencies are. If you look at BIA, um, I can't imagine any other agency being as effective as the BIA is being as chronically underfunded as they are. Indian Health Service is chronically underfunded. Now we've got um, Nahasda held up uh, for years and years. And with the inflation compounding, this um, lack of reauthorizations, I think that now it's more critical than ever that we really lean into explaining our circumstances and explaining where we're coming from and being patient as we are, but also insistent um, as we need to be. Um, and um, one of the things that I really like to do um, with folks from home is share that, um, and this is the perfect time for you all to be in DC because we're coming up on a new budget season. 
Um, many of you know that the community project funding, um, that's what is called on the House side, and then just to be confusing on the Senate side, they call it congressionally directed spending, but it's the same, same thing. And those requests are great tools for tribal leaders looking to build relationships with their congressional offices. And th those requests can result in real dollars to your communities. Um, I like to encourage Native organizations to track this process closely and to consider whether your tribe or tribal nonprofit, the priorities that you have might be addressed through the CPF or CDS process. Um, you know, and, and having said that, that process only accounts for 1% of federal spending. And we've just got to continue to focus on raising the top line for our, our funding across Indian country, particularly when it comes to um, advance and continuing appropriations. Um, covered all these things. Um, it's been really great um, coming in and working with folks like Sharice Davids, but also continuing to work with People like Lisa Murkowski, um, who is a Republican across the aisle. She's been a champion for Natives for many years. Um, Tom Cole, a Republican, um, he has been wonderful to work with as well across the aisle. They both have a wealth of experience and knowledge from their own backgrounds. I also want to give a shout out to the two members from the Dakotas, Dusty Johnson and Kelly Armstrong. I think they are really um, just great advocates and allies uh, for Indian country. Um, but like I said a minute ago, we just need so many more champions on both sides of the aisle for, for Native people and who have a depth of knowledge on, on our issues and can join in our advocacy work. Um, allies come in all different um, shapes and sizes and forms and just I'm always looking for people who will work with us. And of course, we're not going to be aligned on every single issue. I think that's a very unrealistic expectation. But that doesn't mean that on specific issues, we can't be joined at the hip and, and pulling in the same direction. But um, I just can't say enough about unity and the importance of us all working together. And I know that Alaska, I represent Alaska. Um, it's funny when people here call it my district because it's the entire state of Alaska, and it doesn't really feel like a house district. It is, it's the size of a large country. Um, and the framework that Alaska Natives work in um, under our sovereignty is really unique, and it's really different. And it's not one that any one of, this, of my generation has chosen to work under that framework. That was a framework that we were born into, and that we are working um, to make sure that um, we are represented as well and um, so I just want to say that even though our framework might be unique and strange it is our framework for sovereignty um, and it is the way that we are able to get funding to advance our own sovereignty and that's I think what all of this is about um, you know and I think it's worth noting that we are a political group we are nations we, we operate government to government we're not a racial subset. We are governments. And thank you. <laughs> we all have sovereignty. We're all working to enhance our sovereignty and build upon it and um, just doing everything that we can to make our own communities better and um, really be in control of our own destiny. And all of you are part of that collective effort in your communities and at the state level and national level, and I just really appreciate all of you. Um, yesterday, this was a laugh line, so I'll say it again. I want to put a plug in for Miss NCAI. Uh, <laughs> and, um, you know, it is kind of funny in some ways, but in a, in a lot of other ways, being Miss NCAI and, and being part of those cultural pageants really laid the framework for me to go on to more public service. The, the skills that you're taught in those pageants about 
um, you know, thinking on your feet and responding to really challenging policy questions and representing your people, I think are really good skills for young people in any kind of youth program. We have got to be building more and more youth programs and getting more and more young people into these spaces. So thank you all very much for having me today and I look forward to visiting with you all while you're here in DC. Rihanna Chaknachbaka.